uh, who is used to add value to what is being suggested. Because uh, what we were saying to what we did, what was our product? Our product was the event, which is what we, uh, we confected. Hilal, uh, can we go? specific theme as such. Needles being jabbed uh, into arms, uh, children covered with sores, uh, dying of, uh, of tetanus. I mean, things that would simply cause a mother to screen out everything that you were saying. So these, by no means perfect, but they did the job. In North Bihar, for example, the most resistant North Bihar, Eastern UP, the levels, the median levels of, of immunization went up from things like 13, 16% to 88 to 90%. I think that's achievement. Okay. The National Literacy Mission, uh, the goals were 30 million new literates by 1990. We're talking now about 1988 as a starting point. 50 million more by 1995 wanted a voluntary movement. The idea was, uh, well, the question was, what appeal would mobilize volunteers? In other words, the marketing idea of the National Literacy Mission was to transform the literacy mission into one directed at the literate, at the educated, where before the National Literacy Mission was a great thrust at the illiterate. So the great breakthrough idea was to say, look here, the National Literacy Mission is about the literate. So what will appeal to the literate so that you can mobilize them? What benefit will hold them to that voluntary effort? And what we came up with, the product proposition, the appeal, the benefit, was the personal pride that you feel, the personal pride of the instructor who has brought an illiterate person to literacy. Now, you're going to see two spots. The spot is a longish one. I think it is fair for me to uh, quickly explain a little bit there because not everybody will follow uh, Hindi. Within the spot, there is a flashback. You have an instructor 
who sees somebody who, instru who he ha has instructed actually doing a job. And he thinks back and he says, I did that. And the second one shows uh, a mother, a young mother, taking her little girl with a gift to the young girl who had taught her uh, numbers and letters. So there's a married scene uh, and the young mother. And the last spot on this tape, uh, in effect, says, let us transform thumb impressions into Ram. Thumb impressions into Mala. Give them names, because then they will be able to write those names. Can we have them, please, Rama? The difference between those, and I wish I could show them to you, and these, is the rigor, is the creative mind, is the conceptual framework, the checklist that we all carry about with us in our pockets or in our minds as advertising and marketing people. What I've been trying to do for the last, it probably feels like a month, what I've been trying to do uh, since I began is to suggest to you that Yes, advertising and marketing contains that checklist, contains that framework, contains those concepts and technology. What are you going to do about it? It's not easy. 
to do something about it because advertising people have more or less been ruled out of the area uh, of marketing, of, uh, of, of development. And uh, Mike uh, will uh, bear me out when I say that. It's very difficult to introduce people from the private sector and advertising and marketing into development, but times are changing at least in that sense. Um, and the second thing that I would now like to suggest to you is this, that advertising and marketing people, you who are here, need to leave this hall with a slightly different self-image from the one that you brought in with you. Because you have this skill and this talent. Now, there is a kind of mythology about advertising abroad that is really most unflattering. Advertising people are supposed to go through the world with a cocktail glass in one hand and in the other a knife sheathed preferably between the shoulder blades of a friend. Um, their, their, their IQ is supposed to be as low as their models, they are superficial, they are overpaid, etc. Now we all know that that is pure nonsense. There must be some way of proving that that is so. Now, we who have been in advertising and are now in, in development um, know the difference that advertising and marketing can make. Because I suppose the key thing that advertising people do and the key thing that advertising people could do in development is to say the same old things better. What was the difference between what you saw just now and what was being done? Basically the same thing was being said, but how much better this was being said. This takes me back to my very early days in advertising when I was at a, at a creative seminar being run by the great Sid Bernstein. And he, I remember he saying one day, he said, you know, what we have to do is to fire basic content with the spark of our imagination. And he said, I could tell you, couldn't I, that beautiful women must have many daughters so that we may forever be surrounded by beautiful women. I could say that, couldn't I? It makes sense. He says, or I could put it the way Shakespeare does in the first couplet of his first sonnet. From fairest creatures we desire increase, that thereby beauty's rose might never die. Thank you. As the 13th IRS B Boy Memorial Lecture draws to a close, I take this opportunity to thank everyone who helped make this a success. On behalf of the Advertising Club of Bangalore, I thank our distinguished speaker, Mr. Dakuna, for his interesting and illuminating talk on development communications. I'm sure Mr. Dakuna's insights have added a new dimension to our understanding of this issue, which is so relevant and important to all of us in the field of communication. I would now request Sadika to hand over a memento as a token of our appreciation. opportunity to thank Banti and his team 
from Mark Communications for maintaining the tradition of the IRSP Boy Memorial Lecture, which has become an important event for the advertising fraternity of Bangalore. And finally, thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you.